It took just 36 seconds. The surveillance video inside Cabela's in Granville shows the first thief, a 16-year-old, bursting through the glass front door. Four accomplices follow, the youngest just 13. They rush past camping gear and flannel shirts to a glass display case, no match for their sledgehammers. These thieves knew right where to go. Just the day before, surveillance footage shows them window shopping and checking for security cameras. Exactly 36 seconds after breaking in, the last thief ducks out. Their take, 13 semi-automatic pistols, mostly 9mm Glocks, which they showed off on Snapchat and quickly put to use. Even the 16-year-old ringleader, that's him in the Snapchat video on the far left, called it almost too easy. That's him now, in prison. I mean, the stores with glass, all you gotta do is break the glass. If you quick enough, break the glass, get in and get out. <laughs> no, not in. The stolen guns are still turning up in West Michigan. Right here, there was a big pile of old grass here, a lot of bushes. You know, we uh, decided to start cleaning up for beautiful garden. This spring, 20 months after the Cabela's heist, at a home six miles away across from Marquette Park in Wyoming. It looks like somebody just threw them there. Mario Ariano and his brother found one of Cabela's guns, a 9mm Glock, along with three other stolen guns ditched behind the family home, not far from where his four-year-old daughter Ariana likes to play with her dog. It's kind of scary. You know, because, you know, we, we have kids, everything. I mean, you know, if one of those kids, and, and the, the guns were loaded. They were loaded. They were loaded, ready to fire. Thieves have hit federally licensed gun shops 14 times in Kent and Ottawa County since September 2017, usually smashing glass doors to get in before crashing through glass display cases to get the guns. Is that too easy? I think absolutely it's too easy. I think that um, gun dealers or, or anybody for that matter, if you are going to carry guns, you need to secure them in a well thought out or secured manner. While police have arrested the culprits in most cases, most of the guns are still on the streets. According to records compiled by Target 8, of the 221 guns stolen in all, police have recovered just 60 leaving 161 guns unaccounted for. Criminals are arming themselves based upon some things that the gun shop owners could have prevented. To track what has happened to these stolen guns, Target 8 filed more than a dozen public records requests with nine police departments and dug through court records. We narrowed our focus to the gun stolen in September 2017 from Cabela's in Granville and Barrick 616 in Cascade Township eight days later. 29 pistols in all and just 10 recovered so far, all in West Michigan. We're worried about what's going to happen with those weapons. Those weapons could take somebody's life in the future and we don't want that to happen. Within just hours of the break-in at Cabela's early in the morning on September 16th, 2017, the bullets were already flying here on Grand Rapids Southeast side. Just for fun reports show the thieves fired their new guns into the air on Blaine Avenue and Boston Street. They opened fire from their car at a rival gang on Dickinson Street and fired shots near Baxter Street and Diamond Avenue. Herbie Brewer, identified as the leader of the September 2017 heist at Cabela's and Barracks 616, sold some on the streets of Grand Rapids and in Muskegon Heights. He's 18 now, serving six to 10 years in prison for the thefts. The life that people live nowadays, ain't no fighting no more. You gonna shoot it out or die. Yeah. So everybody want a gun because don't nobody want to fight. Like Brewer, most of the thieves records show are teenagers, not exactly criminal masterminds. There's some young people who have understood this to be an easy thing to do and that you get a lot of firearms if you hit one of these stores and, and they have value. Value to the thieves who have armed themselves, have armed fellow gang members, and have sold guns for easy money.
it's not just them, it's not just their immediate circle, but they're often pooling them as almost like a community resource that can be used by whoever needs or wants a weapon. Within days, Grand Rapids Police, working with federal ATFE agents, the Kent County Sheriff's Department, and police from Granville, recovered five of the 13 Cabela's guns. If you don't get them fairly soon after the event, and once they um, start scattering, yes, it becomes much harder to obtain the weapons. Police seized three guns while arresting some of the teenage thieves outside Buffalo Wild Wings on 28th Street. One a few days later in a teenager's backpack after shots were fired into a southeast side home. One a few minutes later after more shots were fired nearby. They arrested a 20-year-old tattoo artist who had bought a Cabela's gun in exchange for a $250 tattoo. The 40 caliber Glock was loaded and in his waistband. Grand Rapids police later found another Cabela's gun on a man arrested with crack cocaine in a traffic stop. Two months after the heist, a seven-year-old boy hunting for golf balls with his dad near Indian Trails Golf Course in Grand Rapids found a Glock 9 from Cabela's, loaded with a bullet in the chamber. That is extremely disturbing and scary. All this area. Then this past May, Mario Ariano and his brother in Wyoming found four stolen handguns, one from Cabela's in the weeds and brush in his backyard, two in an unlocked lockbox, two in a plastic bag. They figure somebody had ditched them there before the family moved in last year. Probably somebody very uh, desperate, you know, because yeah. it was just, it looks like somebody just threw them there. So now, two years after the Cabela's heist, that leaves five of the 13 stolen guns still out there. None of it's good. None of it's good. Anytime there's illegal weapons, there's absolute possibility that it could be used to kill somebody. And that, that makes me very nervous. Very, very nervous.